this video, we're talking about how to find marginal cost, marginal revenue, and marginal profit. And keep in mind that marginal cost, revenue, and profit represent the derivatives of cost, revenue, and profit, respectively. So you can think about them as the rate of change of cost, revenue, and profit. So if you can find a function for marginal cost, for example, and you plug in a certain value of x, then the marginal cost function will give back to you the rate of change of cost, so how fast cost is increasing or how fast cost is decreasing at that particular value of x. So this will become a little bit more clear as we go through it. But in this particular problem, we've been told that a toy company has fixed costs of $1,000 per week. So remember that fixed costs are going to be costs that don't change. No matter how many units they make, even if they make zero units, if they make 10,000 units, doesn't matter how many, their fixed costs are always going to be $1,000. So that could be like rent on their warehouse or their manufacturing facility, for example. It wouldn't change no matter how many units they made. So their fixed costs are $1,000 per week, and it costs them $4.50 to make each toy. We've also already been given the weekly revenue function. We know that the function that represents weekly revenue is r of x equals 10x minus 0.01x squared. And that revenue function applies when the toy company makes anywhere between 0 and 800 units. Now from that information, we've been asked to find marginal cost, marginal revenue, and marginal profit. So the first thing we want to do before we can find those marginal functions, we want to find a function for cost, revenue, and profit. So the cost function, we always find the same way. First of all, we call the cost function C of x. And the cost function is always going to be fixed costs. So we'll say $1,000. And then we add to that always, we multiply the amount it costs to make each unit by x, because x is the number of units we make. So we say plus 4.5 multiplied by x. So this represents the cost, because it's going to cost the company $1,000 always, right off the top, that's fixed, plus $4.50 for every toy they make. So if they made 10 toys, then we would multiply 10 by 4.5, we get $45. So total cost would be 1,000 plus 45, so total cost to make 10 toys would be $1,045. So that's going to be our cost function. Now our revenue function we already have. We've already been given the revenue function, and it's 10x minus 0.01x squared. And then to find the profit function, remember that profit is always just revenue minus cost. So if I want to figure out how much money I walk away with at the end of the day, I have to take how much money I bring in the door and then subtract my expenses. Profit then is what I have left over. So profit is going to be revenue. So we take 10x minus 0.01x squared, and we subtract cost. Now it's really important here to remember to put parentheses around the entire cost function so that we distribute this negative sign. So we're going to say minus the entire cost function here, 1,000 plus 4.5 times x. And then we can simplify this here. So we'll say 10x minus 0.01x squared. Distributing the negative sign, we get minus 1,000 and then minus 4.5x. Now if we want to put these terms in order, let's start with the x squared term. So we'll say negative 0.01x squared. Then we have 10x minus 4.5x. That leaves us with a plus 5.5x, and then minus 1,000. Now that we've got cost, revenue, and profit, we just need to take their derivatives to find the marginal functions. So to find marginal cost, we'll call it c prime of x, because marginal cost is just the derivative of the cost function. So the derivative of 1,000 is 0. The derivative of 4.5x is just 4.5, so we get 4.5, and the marginal cost function is c prime of x equals 4.5. To get the marginal revenue function, we'll just take the derivative of revenue. We'll call this r prime of x. That's going to be equal to the derivative of 10x is 10. The derivative of negative 0.01x squared, we multiply this 2 by the coefficient, so we get minus 0.02x, and then we subtract 1 from the coefficient. So 2 minus 1 is 1 x to the first is still just x, so this then is our marginal revenue function. And then marginal profit will be p prime of x, and we're going to take the derivative of this function here at the bottom. So again, taking it term by term, we'll get negative 0.02x, and then plus 5.5. The derivative of 1,000 is 0, so we don't have to subtract 0 there. So now we have the marginal cost, revenue, and profit functions. 
If we had been asked, for example, to find marginal cost, revenue, and profit when the company makes 100 units, they make 100 toys, all we would do is plug that value into each of these functions. So we would say, for example, C prime of 100 is equal to, there's no variable over here on the right hand side and therefore nowhere to plug in 100, so we would still just be left with 4.5. We would take R prime of 100 and we would get 10 minus 0 0.02 times 100 is 2, so we would get 10 minus 2 or 8, and then profit, marginal profit of 100 units or at 100 units would give us negative 0 0.02 times 100, which would be a negative 2 plus 5.5, so we would end up with 3.5. So what that tells us then is that when the company makes its 100th unit, costs go up by $4.50. And of course that makes sense because their fixed costs are fixed, they don't change. But every time they make a toy, it costs them an additional $4.50. So of course when they make their 100th toy, the company's costs are going to go up by $4.50. We also know that when the company makes its 100th toy, revenue is going to increase by $8 because we have a positive 8 here. So when the company makes its 100th toy, revenue goes up by $8. And when the company makes its 100th toy, profit is going to go up by $3.50 because we have a positive 3.5 over here. And that should make sense because if when the company makes its 100th toy, revenue increases by $8 and costs increase by $4.50, then 8 minus 4.5 gives us 3.5. So of course profit would increase by $3.50 at that specific unit level when the company makes its 100th toy. These values are going to change if the company is making its 10th toy or its 500th toy, but these functions here, marginal cost, revenue, and profit, are going to be the functions that allow the company to figure out how cost, revenue, and profit are changing depending on how many units they produce.